As some of you long-term viewers of the channel know, I use multiple GNU Linux distros on a daily basis. At work, we have some headless servers that are running Debian or CentOS. At home, I usually jump between Easy, Just Works, Linux Mint, and Gentoo, which isn't always so stable, at least for video production and editing, but that's because I like to do some pretty crazy configs on that machine that tend to break those larger programs. But recently, I added another Linux distro to the fold, Arch Linux, which is what I decided to use for my Tor Relay slash I2P router because Arch had the most recent versions of those packages in its repos. If it wasn't for that, then I probably would have just installed Debian Stable to it as I originally intended to because I'm much more familiar with that from work and from using Linux Mint since it is based on Debian. So because I was less familiar with using Arch, I was expecting it to be much more tedious to deploy than a headless Debian box, which I'm so much more experienced with. And the last time that I used Arch, it was really more of a build-it-yourself distro, which you would have to follow the Arch wiki or you would just have to go from your memory to set up Arch. But recently, they added the Arch installer, which makes setting up Arch so quick and easy. Of course, this made some people who like to brag about installing Arch as if it's something special a little bit upset, but I never really cared about that. And if I did want to feel like an elitist, I could just boot into my crazy optimized Gentoo machine. So that got me thinking. Why don't I just use an Arch-based distro as my Just Works distro? I think it makes a lot more sense, especially since I'm creating a lot of content that is aimed at Linux users who are probably using Arch-based distros themselves. Whether you decide to use Arch Linux or Artix Linux like I'm using here or Manjaro, we're all using the same package manager and we all have access to the AUR, so it should make my videos much easier to follow, especially whenever you have to install something. Also, the documentation that exists on Arch Linux is really good. So good, in fact, that if you've ever had any issues on any Linux distros, you've probably ended up either on the Arch Wiki or the Arch forums to find the solution to it. And the solution was probably pretty good. I can't tell you how many times I've seen solutions, not real solutions, to things on the Ubuntu forums that tell people, oh, just use a different program if this one doesn't work, which is the laziest kind of solution I've ever heard. If you're asking for how to use a specific program, chances are you want to use that specific program. You aren't gonna get that on the Arch forums. What you might get instead though, is a lot of people telling you to go read the Arch Wiki because in all honesty, the answer to your question is probably in there. And like I said at the beginning, a lot of Arch users tend to be elitist. Like I'm not making up the fact that some people were upset about Arch install and I guess having a successfully installed Arch Linux being some sort of achievement essentially being removed by one little program. But either way, if you don't like their vibe, you could always go ask your question on the Manjaro forum because Manjaro and Arch, they're basically the same distro. It's just that Manjaro is even easier to set up, especially if you don't know every single program that you want to install off the top of your head or if using the command line still freaks you out because most editions of Manjaro have Pamac installed on them, which is just a GUI front end for Pac-Man that lets you manage packages and repositories without having to use the command line for it. But like I've always said, you really should become familiar with the command line just for the sake of computer literacy, if anything else. Even if you don't want to use Linux, if you want to just use Mac OS or Windows, even Chrome OS, they all have a command line. And those of you who know how to use it are much more powerful and much more efficient on their computers, especially when it comes to installing programs. You can make that a five second job. Like let's say if you're in setting up a new computer, 
Installing packages on Linux, if you know how to use the command line, is going to take you five seconds of actual work. Whereas to do it on Windows or to do it even on Linux, if you don't know how to use the command line, that might take you 45 minutes to set up all of your packages. So yeah, if you're thinking of installing your first Linux distro, why not give Arch or one of its cousins a try? If I had to rank them from hardest to install to easiest, I would probably actually still rank Arch as the hardest since you still have to run the Arch install program from the command line. Uh, as far as I know, that's all that really is available to download is just the Arch base install. You can see that the ISO is only 850 megabytes, so it doesn't really come with a pre-set up desktop environment or anything like that. Artix, I would probably put in the middle because you actually can get it with a desktop environment. Uh, if we go to download, so you can see here that they have the base, which is pretty much like Arch, except one difference between Artix and Arch, and pretty much the reason I decided to use it is that it doesn't make you use systemd. You can use alternative uh, init systems if you want. But yeah, you could do Cinnamon desktop environment. You could do XFCE, which is what I've got here. So you don't have to necessarily install it through the command line because these are going to give you a GUI to install the operating system. Now to install packages, you're still going to have to do that from the command line because these don't come with PAMEC installed. And then of course the easiest is Manjaro because you can sort of avoid the command line in it. It's, it's almost inevitable that you're going to have to use the command line in Linux, so it's not something you can put off forever, but Manjaro gives you a lot more training wheels with using Linux. And if you're confused about desktop environments, if you're seeing all of this stuff like, oh, Cinnamon or Mate, LXQT, LXDE, what are all of these things? You can just go to your favorite search engine and just plug it right into there, into the image search, and look up what they look like. They're just different desktop environments. And even then, you can customize them further. But just pick whichever one looks the closest to how you want your desktop to look. Don't think about it too much. Or if you want to get a review on them, you can look for a review by DistroTube on them. I think he's probably reviewed every single one of these different desktop environments and every single one of these Linux distros as well. And one other thing that you should do to prepare yourself is that I recommend watching some videos of people installing Manjaro or whatever distro you're going to go with and do some research of what programs you're going to use because certain things like Photoshop or Adobe Premiere don't work in Linux. Microsoft Office isn't available, at least not the offline version, but there are alternatives to those softwares like GIMP, Kadian Live, and LibreOffice respectively. Try them out on Windows or Mac OS before switching to Linux and make sure that you can actually use them. But the point is, in current year, it's actually pretty easy to install and use Arch, by the way.